If not, I would probably put in Grand Line instead of Fighting Spirit. Yeah, try relogging. Okay, I'll close it. Work. It looks like it's settings. I'm just gonna set it to unranked. Just for fun. So here we go into the final. It's Yui and Ciro. Yui is uh, apparently a former B minus or B Zerg. I'm not exactly sure, but that's the rumor in the chat. And Ciro is a C ranked Terran. TVZ is his strongest matchup. So it'll be interesting to see how he handles against Yui here. And we're going to be going to Fighting Spirit. The Observer. The Observer functions are fixed. So. You should be able to see both players. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. In, like a view of just like one person. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Spawning. Oh, <laughs> Yui having a wacky split. Uh, one of his drones decides to go all the way behind the minerals. Never fun. Classic brood war right there. Spawning up on the top right, we have our orange zerg. We've basically watched him this entire tournament. He is Yui. And over on the top left, we have our purple Terran. He is Zero. So we can see the Overlord heading in the tradi traditional direction from Yui. It is common on this map to you scout clockwise as that sends you to the natural first. Yeah. And Yui is commenting on Kerrigan's appearances. <laughs> And um, Ciro saying, oh, she's ugly, though. You are saying, but yeah, you got to work with what you're given. And then he's saying, yeah, I was in jail once. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, so Ciro kind of going with the classic Brood War style depot placement. In Brood War, if you do this, it'll actually make your SCVs spawn closer to the minerals. I'm not sure where yeah. they naturally spawn in this mod. I wasn't paying close enough attention. Yeah. Um, for some reason, all the buildings look a bit off, like in terms of size. That's just how the models ended up working out. Yeah, supply depots look positively huge. Yep. Barracks are like the same size as the command center. Yeah. All right, so we've got the pull down. Uh, that's over pull here from uh, Yui. So Sierra will need to make a marine or two before expanding. Yeah. And both players are going to be ex scouting over towards the vertical spawns from them, even though they're at horizontal spawns because they're both on the top. So, looks like UA is going to be finding Zero first, as he oh, did. Zero actually opting to double scout really wants to know uh, exactly what Yuri is doing. Yeah. Probably trying to be safe and not too greedy. Yeah. See, links from Yuri are on the way. He is making six of them, and the hat should be coming down. Yeah, we can see the drone right there at the natural. We do have six Zerglings out, and it looks yeah UA wants to expand. Six Zergling is just going to go chase away that SCV. An SCV on the bottom right is moving back up to the top now, but there's really no point as Zero has already scouted his opponent. You can see Zero doing the classic Brood War thing, putting the SCVs on the ramp to block. I'm actually not sure. This is going to be kind of interesting to see how this works out because the Zerglings are a little more efficient at this. It might be possible to break a ramp like this in this, but Yuri uh, is not even going to try in Brood War again because of the way the pathing would go. The Zerglings would try to go up the ramp, but the ones that couldn't would look for an alternate path, so they'd run halfway yeah. back like into the natural. 
but it's a little more efficient. They stay right there, ready to go on this mod. And we can see Ciro is actually going to drop the CC inside his main, playing very safe here. Yep. And it's going to help. Going to be taking out one SCV, replacing it with a Marine. It'll help a lot as it will let him get his income back to where it should be. And Yuri putting down his third hatch and his gas as well. Third hatch is kind of hidden. Uh, Ciro kind of sh might... I don't think he's seen that yet. He needs to go down there and scout that. Or else he's going to suspect some sort of two-edge play. Although the gas would be a little bit late for that. Yeah. Uh, SCV may die here. He's going to try to get away with it. Yeah, it's going right now. The four Zerglings looks like they're too slow. That pathing that Maverick put in is just not helping. It's not helping you get to that SCV yet. So close, yet so far. And we do see Ciro is throwing down the second rack, so he is uh, going to be going for more of the old standard. Kind of the new standard in this matchup is uh, a plus one five racks build, where you go run racks, get gas, throw in your eBay pretty quick, and start your plus one really quick, and you get a bunch of Marines out, and it's quite strong against the standard three hatch meter or three hatch lurker play, as you just have this early Marine ball, and it's quite easy to deny Zerg's third with it. But that is not how Ciro is playing. We'll probably see three or four racks and then tech. Yeah. The Academy is starting up right now, 4-0, and it looks he like it's... He has his lair up, but he has horrible natural saturation. It's... Okay, there we go. There is a main of drones now, so... And I think there is an SCV that is glitching at his ramp right now. At Ciro's ramp? Oh, oh it was glitching out after the command center finished Yeah, I think up. it was trapped between the command center behind the command center. We yeah. can see Ciro now moving down his ramp there with the Marines. going to clean, uh, clean up these links here. And Yuri is getting his link speed, his lair, about three quarters or two thirds done, rather. You can see Ciro is dropping the third racks and is getting his academy. Yep. And UA knows that the command center should be dropping down right now, as he saw all, all the Marines, probably saw the command center flying in, and then an SCV or two come down as well. So UA knows what's going on. and. Oh, UA needs to try and put on some sort of pressure, and it looks like he's going to be doing just that as he is throwing down a Spire here. And we've seen from him that he enjoys Mulisks a lot. So we are going to see three Hatch Muta. Now the Spire uh, in this game has 850 health, so if Yuri adjusts to this properly, he'll build his Overlords, his three Overlords, at around 425 HP. Uh, and Brood War was 600, but it's probably just to compensate for a build time difference. We can see Sir has, has his mags out, and if you notice, there's a Supply Depot near his Natural Command Center. And that's placed there just to narrow off that choke and make it uh, easier to survive if, say, you were to transition into a bunch of Speedlings. Then you can just go behind that and ball up safely. And whoa! Yui is taking this force very seriously, throwing down four Sunkins. He only needs two, but he is throwing yeah. down four, so this is going to be an unfortunate hit to his economy. I don't know if he just thinks this might be a bigger attacker, is worried they won't finish in time, and he really needs to morph these into Sunkins. They are morphing right now. There might be a slight timing window from Zero, but they should finish if he can target down the ones that are building, and he is getting one of them. Oh, uh, but all, okay, it looks like all four are probably going to finish. He is trying to target them down. One goes down. The Lings are doing a pretty good job. There are two up, though, and Zero is going to have to retreat, not able to do any damage here. Yeah, and I think Zero had overstimmed a little bit for whatever reason, and it, it it didn't help him. He did lose about three Marines with that. And it is worth noting, if you're not familiar to Brood War, that poke is not intended to do damage. It is just to force Zerg to make a sunken or two before their meter are out and just, you know, slow down their economy that little bit. Yeah, and of course he did just that, making UA build four sunken colonies and even losing one, so that's... Exactly. Even worse for him. But yeah, now uh, Zero, you know, you might think, oh, he lost some Marines, didn't do anything. But Zero actually came out way ahead in that attack. That was very good for him. And because of that, actually, Yuri, it looks like he's only able to get out six Muta instead of the usual nine. So it's going to give, you know, Zero another 20 or 30 seconds to build up more Marines. And he has, does not have any turrets. Oh, okay, he's got turrets in his main, but he has no turrets so far in the natural, which is a little concerning, as it can be hard to micro behind that natural. Although I think with this pathing in this mod, I think it'll be a little easier to defend Muta behind the natural as the cliff is not quite as close and the marines ball up a little bit nicer. And we yep. can see Yui now moving into the main with these mutas, and these mutas are not, off 3 hits muta, they're not really meant to do damage. They don't have to do damage. Their main purpose is basically the threat of a contain, or uh, to yeah. contain Terran. Because Terran doesn't have a big enough marine count that he can just move out yet. So yep. they just kind of keep him in his base, uh, let uh, Yuri, Yui get his lurkers out, get his third base up. Yeah, and it looks like UA is doing a very good job of that. I think he's killed. Yeah, he's killed three workers so far in this game. It's very well done. 
Uh, when you're doing a, a little less typical, he's taking his third base at the, uh, what you might call a natural third. It's more common actually to take it at another high ground main because then you can yeah. set up your Nidus, you can send it to Father through, and you can just swarm down the ramp and very easily take your fourth. Whereas with this third location, he has to travel all the way down around to the fourth base. It's going to make it, it makes it much harder to eventually secure the fourth base. Yeah, and it looks like Yue wants to go in for another poke soon as he does have all of his mutilists behind the natural right now. And this is this might come in a good time, so it looks like he wants to move out a little bit. Uh, he won't move out yet. I don't think he'll probably wait for his third tank and his first vessel, and this will be a very standard, uh, quote-unquote, it's called nine-minute push. It used to be about a year and a half, two years ago, the absolute standard way to play TVZ. You just get your marines, you get three barracks, you get your tech, you get your science vessel, you push with three tanks, one vessel, and a bunch of marines, and do damage pre defiler. Actually, some pretty nice micro here from Yuri, though, as he is taking out some of Ciro's marines. Yeah. And uh, he hasn't made a ton. He's lost a few, but I'm not sure he ever made a full 11. He's probably lost like two or three muta. But he's keeping killing off a few of uh, Ciro's marines and just doing a general decent job with them. And see that vessel about to finish for Ciro, so he should be about to move out here at any point. And my worry for Yui here is there's no sign of Hive. So if he'll probably be going for a big uh, lair army. He's going to need to flank and be effective with this. But what worries me is the fact that there's no sign of that big army. And I'm kind of worried that Ciro might just roll over to him and kill this third. The Mito are actually doing a little bit of counterattack damage, though. Uh, we'll see if Ciro decides to turn around. No, he's just going to straight up go for it, moving his SCVs down by the turret. And actually, this Mito count really isn't that high. Shouldn't be that dangerous. He's engaging the turret. Uh, Ciro should repair it. He is not, though. He's going to lose that turret, but the Mina count is going to be drastically reduced now. And yeah, that is going to take care of just fine. And now Ciro is pushing into the natural. Lurkers are burrowed. He needs to uh, siege up those tanks to deal with this. He actually has the vessel there in place. And he's actually not even bothering to siege the tanks as the Lurkers have burrowed out in front of the Sunkens. And there's just no army to defend this. And Hive is way too far away. This attack from Ciro is very, very scary right now. There's really no way for him to get uh, rid of this. There's only two ways to deal with these kind of attacks. One is with a nice flank of Lurker Ling and the other is with Hive and Defiler and Swarm, which he doesn't have. And there's only one uh, Sunken left and there's only two Lurkers left. The Hatchery is actually going to be in range of the tanks here as he moves forward. And Yui is about to take crippling damage. The drones are fleeing and I don't know if there's anything he can really do to defend. Yeah, this is just really bad for Yui right now. And again, going back to the third base positioning, if it was at a high ground main, it would be a little bit easier for him just reinforce or even just try restarting all of his tech again. He is trying to do the flank, but the uh, only two lurkers, unfortunately, from the other side, and those are being taken out. The natural is raised, and the third base is 100% vulnerable. And again, there's just not going to be hive. I mean, the queen's yeah. is down. So I think Zero is just going to roll over him here with this first push, taking this game quite easily. Yeah. And I don't know. I think I have to say that UA's best matchup is probably ZVZ and not. CVT. And CVT uh, known for being a hard matchup in Brood War and forced to say GG. That was the matchup that uh, has actually boasted the highest win rate for Terran at about 54 or 55% throughout the history of Brood War. Yeah. And that might have been part of that problem, might have ended up going back to those four sunken. And that he just didn't have, he might also have tried to drone a little too hard, but either way, he just didn't end up with the units. If you're going to delay Hive like that, you just, you have to get out a big mass of units and flank from both sides with it to have any chance of dealing with an attack like that. All right, so it's destination now? Uh, let's see. Yes. All right. By the way, guys, the all the observing is done by very awesome Kuren. He's very good at his job, I just have to say that. Like, it helps me out a lot. Does he have a mic? He's welcome to say hi if he does. Yeah, he does. Remember that mysterious third voice you've heard when you came into the call? That was him. Hey, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for letting me join you. Uh, there were 14 people in this tournament, and there will be more in the future, especially as there will probably be cash prizes for the future one that's in the works, but there's a strong possibility of uh, like 50 to $100 tournaments, uh, five on NA, five on EU coming up in the future, so look for that. And this game, uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'll do during periods of silence uh, or slow points in the game, I'll talk a little bit at a more basic level for those of you that haven't followed Brood War heavily and try to bring you up to speed on what's going on in the matchup. All right. 
Oh, hold up. Seltor, I think it, part of it might just be a lot of a lot of people were afraid. They're like, oh, but I'm not played this. I'm not used to Brood War settings. This is kind of scary. It's going to be casted. So they might have stayed away for that reason or other reasons. That's my best guess, though. All right. Alright, so we're going to be getting into game number two now. <laughs> and this time it's going to be on Destination. Which, again, just on the preview looks really, really awesome compared to its Brood War preview. So we're going to be spawning right on top of our orange Zerg. I think that was the first map he dropped this entire tournament. He is UA. And over on the bottom we have our purple Terran. It is zero. All right, so I'll talk a little bit here uh, about standard ZVT here in the lull. And typically this matchup, uh, the most common, the most common standard way to play it is Terran will go Rax FE, and depending on Zerg's pool timing, build some number of Marines before Command Center, and then Zerg almost always will go for three hatch play, and in most games it's three hatch Muta, so you go, you get three hatches, throw it in your gas, take natural gas, layer, all that stuff. You make uh, eleven Mutas, and then those Mutas uh, serve not necessarily to do do damage, but as a basically a backstep threat. And Terran has to defend until he has sufficient marine count to move out, at which point uh, he'll move out and try to do damage. And during that time, Zerg uh, is able to drone up a little bit more, secure third base, and begin his tech to Lurkers. So then hopefully by the time that army is there, he's got Lurkers out, so he can defend a little bit. And then the most common way to play is almost immediately after making a few Lurkers, uh, the Hive starts coming, and then you rush for Hive and Defilers with Dark Swarm which basically make it so that you're invincible to ranged attacks. You can still be hurt by splash damage, but that basically makes you invincible to all of the Terran army except for Firebats. And from that point, uh, Zerg will then use Swarm to secure fourth base, and then most of the time off four gas go into Ultra Ling play, particularly if Terran sticks with Marine Medic. Although the, the game for Terran has kind of changed. The typical way to play was, uh, like I said, that three racks and then factory starport and then Vessel Push, and then just late game, you would stop making tanks because once Dark Swarm is out and they siege up, if you get Dark Swarm, the tanks almost always die because they have to unsiege and move out of the way. So they're not very practical to include in your army, and you'd switch to two Starport uh, Vessel, so-called SK Terran, and use the large uh, Marine Medic Science Vessel Force, Science Vessel irradiating the Defilers to prevent Dark Swarm and Plague, and also to irradiate the Ultras so they have a lot less HP, 400 to like 150, it does 250 damage. Uh, although now the most common thing to do is right as you're getting your third base, uh, you will actually transition out of barracks play and start making factories. You'll use mines in the meantime, and mines are very, very good against Dark Swarm because they'll go off no matter what. So it really makes you safe against like getting just swarmed in your natural. You could have a huge army, but if you get pushed back into your natural with swarm, you can't hit anything, so you just die. So the mines provide some defense against that, and then you switch into full mech. Uh, putting down five, six, seven, eight, nine factories and just play the rest of the, and that's very hard for Zerg to deal with. So that's kind of the overview of how the matchup is played right now. Yeah. And Destination though is a map not known. It might work a little bit better. The pathing is definitely better on this than in Brood War. Yeah. Um, but Destination was not known as a good bio map because of those double bridges and the lurker splash damage. Literally everything that come across the bridge uh, could just be obliterated by two lurkers and you could only have like two or three Marines attacking at a time. So you just really can't move across the bridges effectively in real Brood War with Bio. So it was much more common to go mech. Not always, but it was certainly more common. But it looks like Ciro here is going for the Bio opener as he is getting his racks and Command Center up quite fast. And I think it'll work a little better with this pathing. Yeah. All right. So five minutes into the game, we have the Terran Academy going up for Ciro right now. Just in case any of you have never played Brood War, um, and, well, like, even me just seeing it for the first time in this mod, it looked exactly like the Ghost Academy, so 
<laughs> you might have gotten confused, like, oh, he's rushing for nukes or something. <laughs> like, what is this five minute nukes? And... There actually is a really cute build off one base you can do that's basically a nuke sunken bust. Uh, if you watch Snipe a lot, Haya does it quite a bit. And you literally do rush out a ghost off, I think, three barracks. And you use the ghost to kill the four or five sunkens that Zerg throws up. And then you just run in with your Marines and win the game. Yeah. Not sure it's viable at pro level, yeah. but uh, Haya is able to do it against very, very strong opponents on fish. People rank 16 or 1700, which is better than really any foreigners except possibly like Idra, Noni, Mondragon were. Mm. And uh, just in my personal opinion, I think new crushes are better looking in a C2 than Brood War. Like, sure, like, I know nukes in Brood War just blew everything up. But, in my opinion, I like having the fire on all the buildings. <laughs> yeah. It just looks cool. Also, it's worth noting, Ciro, his bunker placement is interesting because it, he has absolutely mannered his comsat, so he's not going to be able to throw in a second comsat there, which is going to be kind of annoying. Yeah. He'll have to kill that bunker off uh, eventually to add that second comsat, and we can see Ciro here is getting four racks up. So this is going to be a little bit more aggressive play, a little bit more oriented towards denying the third base. But the engineering bay quite slow, so it's not like a quick plus one. And plus one is uh, really strong for Marines fighting both, uh, well, really anything, just because of their low damage. You know, same way we be in SC2. You know, when you do five damage and you add plus one to it, a lot stronger. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Zero killing off the bunker. Gonna be able to pet his comp set. And it's fine for. Actually, Yuri does have a decent number of things right now. Uh, how many is this? Uh, a lot. Okay, this actually is kind of scary. If Ciro doesn't rebuild that bunker and moves out carelessly, he could be in trouble. This is pretty Ling all in ish. Uh, the lair is, the spire is being made, but this is a lot of Lings. Yui really needs this, though, to do some damage, or it's going to be really unfortunate. And Ciro is moving out, so this is exactly the opportunity Yui needs. And here we go. Yui rushing with a bunch of Lings. Ciro needs to stim and pull back, but he's too slow to do it. Lots of Marines are going to go down here, I think. Yeah, there you go. Easily going down, getting separated from the medics. The Lings coming in, trying to surround, do damage. Uh, actually, Ciro doing a pretty good job. That's cleaned up way better than I expected. I don't know if that's a micro thing or a pathing thing, but uh, Ciro is actually going to hold this off just fine. That should have been, yeah. been more scary than that was. Yeah, um, I think UA, he decided to go for that as really, he saw that when he never really poked into CRO at all last game, it didn't go so well for him, so he's trying to do more, more pokes in with Zerglings, and he's probably going to try doing some more pokes in with his Mulisks this game, and not try aiming down turrets when he only has three Mulisks left, because he does have 11 now, and he's... I don't think there are any turrets up anywhere. Uh, there are some in the main, yeah. I know. Uh, the natural yeah. has no turrets yet, though. Yeah, so UA, he might be able to do deal a lot of damage with this. And, of course, get his economy running, get that third base that he dropped down running. Ooh, but Ciro going to be doing a push oh. out as well. Uh, yeah, we'll see if he notices this. Uh, he's got nothing at the natural to defend, though, and Ciro actually just starting his plus one as well, so it's a little bit slower than we'd see. So the meter is going to start doing some nice damage in the natural. Zero is not going to opt to come back, so he's going to vacate the natural for now. Run to his turrets. There's actually not many marines either in the main. Uh, this has potential to do a lot of damage. Yeah, and now Zero is arriving at UA's natural right here, and the marines... Next question, is there enough to defend? They get over the bridge is really easy. The sunken goes right down. This is actually going to do a lot of damage as well. Both players doing significant damage with their counterattacks. Yep, but it looks like UA not going to be able to deal more damage than he already has as he is pulling back. He needs to save this this base and he's going to lose his Hydralisk then. Uh, it looks like he will just barely hold it. The Link's coming in for the surround and the Muta's cleaning everything up now. So he does hold, but unfortunately he has lost a hatchery. So basically, Ciro just killed the third there and didn't take all that many SCV losses. So Ciro is going to be, I think, comfortable with his position. Yep. And now we do have UA moving in here once again with some Zerglings as well. Turrets are going up, but I don't think it'll be enough. Zero did lose a lot of Marines, but it looks like he might have enough to defend the Mulists here. All the Zerglings. Uh, although it's important to notice he doesn't have any medics, which means that uh, Yuri, although how many Mutas does he have? Oh, he's only got a few. Okay, so Zero's fine. I was going to yeah. say, if there was a full flock there, uh, he can just continue to micro that and be very, very effective, very cost-efficient, microing against mutas or against marines with no medic. Yeah. 
plus one infantry weapons on the wave force hero, and you are going to be getting plus one carapace. As the are out, and he does have his lurkers as well. Yep, those or are going to upgrade. help a lot. And more lurkers are being built right now as more hydralisks are popping out for UA right now. The natural is about to get remade for UA here. And right now, Koran going to be showing us two lurkers just walking around. You can look at how derpy they look in SC2. And actually right now, Yui has a... Uh, he's actually getting into a pretty comfortable position. He's getting his third base up, and he's got a very nice worker count. All three bases uh, are going to be very well saturated uh, once the drones stop moving around. Uh, and Ciro's SCV count is not particularly high uh, at either base. Could definitely have a few more. Has lots of few to the Muta. Yeah. And now it looks like Zero is going to be pushing out, and UA tried pushing out as well, so it didn't work out too well. The Lurkers are burrowed in. Ooh, nice. Three, now, the Marines there. Oh, the tank's kind of open it out in the open. Okay, but there we go. Get chased up. Oh, Zero's got to be really careful not to run into those Lurkers like that. We'll see how well he can spread. Uh, he doesn't have a Science Vessel yet. How close is that to coming? Uh, okay, there's no Science Vessel in production. This is going to be very hard here. Zero's going to have to push. If he continues to try, he's going to have to push on scans alone, which is it's tough yeah. to do. Yeah. And you also have to be careful because you can get absolutely butchered by hold lurkers here, uh, which is basically where you take lurkers and you'd have them attack a building in the fog of war that they can't hit, so they won't do anything. Wait till a bunch of marines and medics stand on top of the lurkers, and then spring the trap. Basically think of propane links, but yeah. more devastating probably in most situations. Yeah. Of course, it is mainly because there are no science vessels as the science facility is finishing up now and this is pretty late for zero and it of course the lurkers did move from the middle of the map so zero can slowly push out methodically prefer i think he should go towards the third base and then try and swoop around from the back of the natural uh that would be one possibility uh, best thing you can do here uh, is get off a nice flank, though. If he can sandwich this army here, yeah. And it is going to make it across the bridges. Still no science vessel, though, and these are lots of lurkers. So the difference here this time is Yui has a slow hive, but he's got his big mid, mid game army. He's got a lot of lurkers and a decent number of lings. It's going to be very hard for Sierra to attack. And here we go. He's trying to coordinate the big surround. The lurkers are moving in. Elven then burn. Can Sierra split? He needs to throw them the scans. Lots of marines dying quite quickly, and these are just getting eaten up. They are very clumped right now. Uh, there are a lot of tanks, though. Still doing some good damage, and he might just clean up this army as it's now just a lurker army. If he still has the scans, he can probably get rid of a lot of these lurkers moving the tanks back right now. Oh, those are scourge, okay. Yeah. Uh, Zero did a good thing where he saved up a lot of energy on his combat stations as he knew he didn't have the science vessels out yet. So he, before he pushed, he saved them up. But of course, lurkers are still very strong, even if they are scanned, since there was like 20 of them. So Zero did lose all of his tanks there. He lost a lot of Marines and Medics. But it looks like there's going to be a bit of a drop going on. Uh, you're, you should be all over it. I mean, he basically flew over your, your Yui's units right now. And you're, you're cleaning up the rest of Zero's force. And here we go, the drop flying into the main right now. And there is no response so far. Uh, some Scourge are coming maybe to get rid of the dropship. I can't right now with the Marines below. And this is a Marine only drop, so it will get cleaned up really easy. But he might be able to take out the spawning pool. The HP falling, and yes, that is going to fall. Nice little yep. kill there. And looks like the Zerglings are trying to get back, of course, that pathing. Not helping trying to get between the egg and the hatchery. The Scourge is going to be flying right into the dropship, killing it off, actually, just as we left that spot. So those Scourge very well placed by Yue there, but he did get the damage taken. Now he has to rebuild his spawning pool. And just one thing to note, Zero has been on two bases this entire time right now. That's, and he has more workers than his Zerg opponent. That is on three going to four. It's actually fairly common for Terran to remain on the two bases. Um, not sure about the worker count. Zero should have more. He's been on, uh, really hasn't been producing workers for a long time. He could have a few more to main it out, but he is going to need to secure a... Uh, third base here pretty soon as he is starting to dry up in the main. He does have his two vessels out now, and actually, this army has a lot of links in it, but he really needs to get these lurkers uh, out with it as well. 
And really not the greatest map vision right now. We can see Ciro's trying to float out his third behind this, but Yui kind of doesn't know where Ciro's army is, which can be a bit of trouble because that fourth base that uh, Yui is trying to take very exposed. Yep. And now there was a Zergling just burrowed in to stop the third command center from landing down. Scan went off even though the Zergling already died. I guess he forgot that he had science vessels with that control group and then he killed it off anyways. Anyway, Zero looks like he wants to try pushing out onto the map right this now. Is a lot of units right now from Yui, and they are arrayed in a nice format here. Of course, the army from Zero is reasonably big, also. Yeah, and there oh, are oh, irradiate going down on one of the lurkers. And oh, Zero's really close. Needs to spread the marines out, or he might just pull back as soon as the lurkers go to burrow. Right now, he needs to. There we go, going for the split and moving back out of the way quite easily out of those uh, lurker spines, and cleaning up a lot of links in the process. Yep. And oh, he's staying really clumped. He needs to get out of there. Lots of Marines going down right now. But there are still so many Lurkers right now. Zero, he's going. He's probably going to be losing a lot of this here. Because there's only a tank. Oh, and the Skirts coming in from the dropships there. Nicely cloned out. It looks like he is going to lose every single Science Vessel. Nice move there from Yui. As those Vessels are absolutely critical. They're your detection, irradiates. Just, oh, and some Rallied Marines are rallied into Lurkers. That ends tragically for them. And now some Vultures going to be joining the army of zero it's going to be helping a lot those spider mines might be able to just catch lurkers off guard especially when ua wants to try pushing out and it looks like ua the big danger for zero right now is that third base with losing the army very exposed and the army is out of position he's gonna have to run the scvs for sure lift off the cc and there we go we can see zero transferring away and the hive is uh well, actually only halfway so very very slow hive for yuri but his big game army doing the thing and as we talked about earlier those vultures now starting to creep out for zero and the factories are being placed down the beginnings of the mech switch starting right now oh and yui has cutely burrowed another ling at the third yep and it's not going down yet i guess he doesn't have the energy on his or hasn't noticed, I'm not sure which. Yeah, he's got plenty of energy. Yeah, he that's has... the one. That's the one weakness I have to say, playing Zero, I play him in PvT a lot. But he pushes very, very well. Uh, but sometimes he gets strangely slow to secure more bases and take care of other problems. I think he puts, he's not a super fast player, and I think he puts a lot of focus into his push and sometimes uh, s slacks off on the other things. Yeah. Um. One of them being sieging, of course. He hasn't done that yet. Uh, yeah, although sometimes if you're out in the open like that, it's not always worth it because they, you just kind of get surrounded and they don't do a very good job. So we can see some vultures moving out here. Looking to do a little bit of vulture raiding. Actually, none of these lurkers are burrowed and we can see some mines are being laid right now around the map. Start to give him some map vision, some map control. Actually doing a nice job. He's laying mines in front of the fourth. I think he's going to go raid the fourth after this. This is a huge yeah. minefield, by the way. Yeah. And Yuri is or Yui is moving out. Well, I I, I don't. I'm, I'm kind of interested. I'm surprised he doesn't burrow his lurkers a little more at the bridges. That would give him a little more space on the map and make it a lot harder for Zero to move around. But it will be a while before Zero is moving around. He'll probably try to secure uh, his bases first, get a little bit of the mech army out, and then we'll see him push. I feel no. Should have hit some of those lurkers already, but it was... uh, they actually have a very short attack radius. I need to see a lurker moving really close, but it was really not a big range they have at all. It's kind of funny though to see lurkers being used to clear spider mines. Yeah, those vultures are just right on top of the spider mines, or like right in line with them, and it's working out. Force UA right now. A lot, a ton more mines are still getting thrown down all over the map here, but the vultures are going down with the zerg with the zerglings that are being used to clean these up. Yeah, Zero not doing the best job of getting his vultures back out of the way. It's usually you pull those back, but... See Yui with a few Scourge patrolling at the fourth base, trying to be right there to catch dropships. And as is typical with the mech transition, we can see Zero has lifted off his Raxes, is sending them out around the map now. And, I mean, you're not going to use them anymore, so might as well use them as scouting tools, right? Yeah, might as well. And remember now, if you're just an SE2 player and just looking into what Brood War is like. Um, overlords are the overseers as well. That's just how it was in Brood War, mainly because you could only you only had nine buttons in Brood War, so they made one flying unit that was really slow at the beginning. You got an upgrade at it for it at lair and then it also detected. 
and there is a very scary army out from Yui right now. Very much lurker based, and it also has a few ultras in there now. It's worth noting these ultras are not upgraded in any way yet. They do not have, okay, the armor upgrade is starting. But they do not have their armor upgrade or their speed upgrade yet, so they're not as dangerous as they could be. But Yui is standing ahead of Ciro in the um, supply count, and Ciro doesn't have any defense right now at his third base. If you look at the bridge at his third base and his third base itself, there's just a tiny group of Marine Medic there, but really, while well, he's got good defense of the middle, and this is exactly what is dangerous, Yui is moving across that bridge, and Ciro is going to be really out of position. Lots of stuff will go down to the third, and Ciro is going to have to scramble out of position here to defend this army. And yeah, this small Marine Medic force isn't going to do a whole lot. There we go. A few of Ciro's units are coming over. The CC has to lift. The SCVs are going to try to evacuate, but the Lurkers are perfectly positioned. I think they will... Oh, no, they might actually sneak by. Okay, so he actually does save the SCVs, which is pretty big. But now he's got to get his mech army and scramble back into place. Or actually, he's going to say, no, screw this. I'm going to counterattack an interesting decision. And with a few Hydras here, Yui may be able to pick off this command center. I don't know if there's anywhere Ciro can float it to be safe. But Ciro, at the same time, is not scanning and is running his tanks into Lurkers. And I think he is losing his control of this game. Uh, yeah. He's just not really anywhere. His army's out of position. He's lost his third base. He suicided tanks over at the fourth of Yui, killing only a sunken colony. I think UA saw that, you know, my opponent does not enjoy siege mode. He does not enjoy hitting E or S. Oh, oh, was the brood war key for it? Oh, okay, right. Oh, right. So my opponent does not enjoy hitting O. So why not just put lurkers everywhere and then let the tanks die while they're walking around? And it's see that Yui is moving up on top of the right-hand cliff looking to secure that base as well. Uh, one thing I don't like that Ciro hasn't done is... Und oh, he's flying his vessels over some Hydra. I gotta be careful of that, but he does want to, I think, irradiate the Ultras. Uh, some Ciro's yes. going down. There we go. The irradiates are going down now on the Ultras. Uh, what he hasn't done is, you look, he had the third secured there for a while. He did not take the fourth behind it. Uh, yeah. Which there's no reason you can't, because once you have that third secured, the fourth is secured, you know, there's no way you can get through it. To it, yeah. to it without killing the third, so you might as well take that, and that would give him more bases to spread his SCVs out. And the real issue from Ciro now is his economy is just not that strong, and Yuri has plenty of bases to mine from, and he's still mining from his main, although it's low. Same with the natural, and the third and fourth are cranking, and Ciro is pretty much mined out everywhere. You can see he's only got two SCVs in the main, he's got none of the natural. In fact, Ciro's not mining at all. He is he literally has no bit at his third base, but yeah, he has oh, okay. very he's low income to where... He should be at right now and, and it looks like Ciro is gonna try to push yeah that's really all he can do he doesn't have an economic lead and he does have a little bit of a scary force to be honest if he can just you know siege he does. He does siege it is so hard to see a battle like this there are a lot of hydras in there which actually aren't that good against tanks and Ciro is not sieging all that many tanks right now he is trying to aim over, over this which kind of works now that it's just hydra and lurkers are not very good against a mech army goliath and tanks both fairly good against lurkers but he needs to keep the scans going down or he is going to lose units, and he's not, he's losing control. Oh no, there's a vessel, okay. So now he can finally clean those up, and this attack going pretty well, but Yuri is way ahead in supplies, and tons of ultras are coming out now. There's a defiler there as well. A swarm would be nice, but I don't think this army can hold anymore, as that is a lot of ultra list, and it will clean up the mech army pretty efficiently. And Ciro is rolled there, down to just 55 supply, and I think we're going to be seeing GG any moment, as he will not be able yeah. to hold either of his bases. Yeah, yeah and there it is, the GG out of zero. So you are going to be tying it up one to one in this best of five, and I think we're going to be heading for gr to Grand Line to the next for the next game, correct? Uh, yes, that is correct. Yeah. All right. Whoa, our chat went mad German there for a while. Yep. Yeah, Michael's pretty good, but I think he is better. And by a little bit better. Uh, probably 100 to 200 points higher, at least in fish, maybe 300. But Michael is tricky to face because he is. Um, He's very unpredictable. He does all kinds of all-in builds really well, but he has uh, very good mechanics and good strength in macro games as well, which is always a tough player to play against. And he has very refined cheeses as well. Very well thought out, prepared cheeses.
Alright, I'm just making a game here. Again, guys, if you do like my casting and would like to see more of it, now I normally do StarCraft 2, and I do enjoy StarCraft 2, unlike a lot of people in the chat from what I've seen so far. But, yeah, if you want to see SC2 later, then, yeah, hit that follow button. Helps a lot. Say they are ready. We can move into game three. It is on all Brood War settings. By the way, it is Brood War settings. All right. So let me just make you guys referee. And here we go. So yeah, Grand Line is a very big four-player macro, macro map. Um, base layout in some ways resembles Fighting Spirit, but it has like two extra expos tucked in there, as you can see on the map preview now, uh, whereas Fighting Spirit just has the one in the middle. Grand Line has uh, like three more there, or two more on the other sides. And the bases at three and nine are island bases. Uh, you just have to drop ship, drop whatever in there, shuttle in units if you want to take those bases. All right, so we're going to be spawning right on top of the orange Zerg. Tying it up one to one last game. He is UA. And over on the bottom right hand corner, we have our blue Terran, who does not enjoy hitting O for siege mode unless he's using the SE2 Akis, which would be S or E. It is zero. Zero getting zero with a dominating win in game one, and then Yui a pretty darn convincing win in game two. Yeah. Destination so. is just his map, man. I guess so. All right. So, what do you think we're going to be seeing out of them on uh, the first four-player map of? Well, not first four-player map. We had Fighting Spirit as well. The first four-player map for the for this best of five. I'm expecting Ciro's going to continue with standard bio play. I don't think he goes mech that often, and I don't know if he 2 4 raids either. I, I, it's because I don't play Zerg enough. I haven't played that many games. If it was TVP, I'd be able to tell you a lot better what we might see from him, but I haven't played as a non Zerg player, and obviously don't play too easy with him all that much. Okay. But we do have ESV going on to scout right up the barracks. So again, this is a four-player map, very different four-player map. I actually haven't seen Grand Line used by too many people, to be honest. It was used in Pro League back about two years ago, but it never became one of the like super common maps, uh, especially in the foreign scene. Like it was used a little bit when it was in Pro League, but after that, it just kind of eh, people forgot about it. Uh, there was actually an incredible game on here between Flash and Sulky, where Flash just absolutely dominated Sulky. I don't, I'm, like, Flash barely lost a unit if that. Like, Sulky has, like, eight lurkers, and Flash just, like, micros down every lurker perfectly, taking, like, zero damage. I don't think he lost a Marine to it, and he just, like, it was one of the most dominating games I've seen in a long time. Alright, so we do see Zero doing his double scout once again with those SCVs. He's going to be finding. A UA going to be dropping down that hatchery and SCV now going into the main. So, pretty quiet game so far. Doesn't really seem like either player wants to do some sort of aggression quite yet. You want a piece of me, boy? Yeah, and Ciro's definitely just going to be doing his Rax expand. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't scout Yuri all that fast, so he built two extra unneeded marines. Uh, against 12 packs, you can actually just drop the CC before any marines. It's not the end of the world, but you know, little things eventually can add up. 
Oh, that should be fixed. That should be fixed. What? Uh, it looks like in uh, like in SC2, you can just shift your scout around and it'll move nicely. Whereas in Brewer, you can never shift move a scout around because it would like go to its destination and then it would stop, process, and make a new command. So every time you stop, you take a hit. Whereas in this game, it looks like uh, you can still shift around and it transitions perfectly. Which well, makes it a lot easier to keep your scout alive. Well, this is SE2 Brood War, dude. Yeah, I know. But he's trying to fix some of the pathing stuff to make it more Brood War-esque. Well, I don't know. I, I, I... In my opinion, this is just my opinion, I think the way that shift moving worked in Brood War was just... stupid. Like, I like it, though, just because it forces that emphasis on the mechanic side of things. You really have to pay attention to the SCV, and it makes it a lot harder to keep your scout alive. I guess. But what we have is what we'll have to work with, as UA yeah. did say. And Zero again, just going, yeah, really, really standard play. Two racks, um, gas, academy, engineering bay. So... Again, pretty quiet game so far, just a few zerglings of UA heading over towards Zero's natural right now. But they're not really going to be able to do anything because there are already quite a few marines for Zero here. And you will be quite comfortable with these bomb positions as it's cross map on a very big map, which will make Zero's uh, timing attacks take that much longer to get over to Yuri's base. And the real thing I'm curious to see with Yuri is, are we going to continue to see the delayed Hive mass Lair style, or are we going to see Yuri go uh, for a faster Hive and showcase some nice Hive play? I don't know. I think he's going to stay more on Lair, though. He's shown that he... Probably the easier yeah. style to do if you haven't played in a while. <laughs> it's easier to coordinate the flanks and doesn't require as much intricate knowledge and good defiler play, which is kind of hard to pull off. And sometimes it becomes a necessity if Terran's playing well. If you aren't efficient with that, you can just die. Yeah. But he he is getting the spire up. But um, hive play, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw from UA this game around, because we, we've seen that his lair play hasn't been working too well versus zero. Um, it's just not doing what it needs to be. So he might try and mix it up, add in a bit of well, not a bit quicker. A, much more regularly timed hive, like he's normally been putting up. And here comes Seer with this. This is really, really standard. Uh, this, oh, whoa, a lot of the Marines are just derping and chilling. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to be coming or if they're there for a counterattack. I don't actually know if that. Okay. It looks like he's going to pull back. Uh, he does actually bait Yuri, Yuri into making that second uh, creep colony. He might not morph it into a sunken, though. Oh, he actually does. Doesn't really need to, but. Yeah, it's just more defense. Playing safe. Playing safe. Yeah. It, it just puts you in a mindset where, like, okay, I can maybe drone up a bit more, I can maybe tech a bit more, I don't have to make as many zerglings. So it, it does help, it's not like it's necessarily bad. Uh, okay, the Muta, oh wait, there are no Muta. Alright, so this is Lurker first with the Spire, where is the Hydroden? The Hydroden's in the main, beside the macro hatch, I believe. Oh, I see it there, okay, yeah. So. It, this is one of two things. It's either just getting the Spire for Scourge, or it's hoping he'll scan there and think it's Muta. And then go Lurker instead, which can throw you off. And whoa, we've got a big Ling run by coming in here, but uh, Seer's Marines are in good position there, tucked back behind. They won't be able to do anything. Plenty of medics out to heal as well. However, with these Lurkers coming, uh, it could get a little scary, and Zero does not have a lot of detection. He just has what's on his scanners, and he does actually have a lot of energy saved up on those scanners. He's got about five scans. So he should be okay against this, provided he has decent micro, but there are already four or five lurkers. Although the more common way to play this is you'll just slap the lurkers down as a contain. You don't necessarily try and bust in off three hatch lurker. Yeah. So UA... Well, that's a lot of units coming down. This might be an attack. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. lurkers down. Like, there's no reason to have your entire army all the way across the map in front of them. And the danger of this, and what I don't like, is I think Zero expects it to be Muta. Yeah, because he yeah. did nothing. Normally you'd be out on you on the map slowing Zerg down, and now he's in this yeah. really tight spot with these lurkers running in right now, and a bunch of lanes are coming as well, and it just when you're in this tight choke, you have no room to micro, and he's getting really, really surrounded. Mm -hmm. The lurkers need to move forward though and come deal with this, and they are now they go all the SCVs are being pulled. They actually need to evacuate. 
because they will just yeah. die instantly to those Lurker Spines, and they also are forcing the Marines back off the ramp, doing severe damage to the Natural, and I really think this is going to be tough for Zero to hold. Yeah. Got almost nothing, losing all the SCVs in the Natural. They're trying to go by, but the Lurkers are taking... Oh, they actually survived. Wow. Yeah. Did not expect that to happen. The scan went down, but there were just basically no Marines at the Natural anymore, so now... UI can move up into the main here. There is a turret here, so they, they can be seen, but of course, with no real attacking units, it's not like it matters if yeah, there's... Yeah, no, the tank is actually surrounded. It's gonna fall to just these four lanes, and now the Lurkers are moving right into the main. And that is GG. Yeah, it's GG. like... You, just, you have to be out on the map against that. You just can't sit back. It's even scarier if it's two hatch Lurker, but you can't just sit back and let them walk up and run into your natural like that. Because when you're in the natural, you have no space to spread and micro against those lurkers. And you just die. Alright, so what is the next map? Uh, the next map was Heartbreak Ridge. Alright. And again, if you like my casting, feel free to hit that follow button. Or, if you're not signed up for Twitch, because, you know, if having 150 viewers, I... The, scrolling through the chat, in my opinion, that doesn't look like 153 people. As I say, chat's really slow for as many people as there are. It's like, no one wants to talk. Yeah. I'll, like, that... I'm, I'm just like, that is not 153 people. Well, you can always follow me on Twitter. My Twitter is twitter.com slash masterdalk. M-A-S-T-E-R-D-A-L-K And Lucid Dream, where can our viewers find you normally? Uh, my stream, I cast some Brood War stuff most of the time, it is uh, twitch.tv slash L underscore master. Cool. So, uh, be sure to check that out. I will be casting some of the TLS stuff as well, uh, at least during the qualifiers. Oh, that's always and, and then two excellent, excellent casters in Sail and Elegant will, of course, be the official TL casters. And both of them are fantastic. Sail, a very high-energy, fun-to-listen-to caster, and Elegant uh, is a surprisingly good uh, analytical caster. He's C-plus rank, but he really pays attention to the game a lot and knows what he's talking about. In my opinion, though, rank doesn't matter a lot in terms of casting. It doesn't always, but... Uh, it tends to correlate a little more in Brood War in terms of the interest yeah. in of how well people know. Because in Brood War, it just seems like the understanding tends to correlate pretty nicely with rank. And a lot of times, people at lower ranks just don't have the knowledge, particularly with the off races. Yeah. All right, so the game is loaded up here. We're going to be spawning right on top of our orange Zerg. Or I think the We've been spawning on top of UA all the time, haven't we? Yeah. It just seems like that. Too. Yeah. Well, I guess you can be drunk colors in this game. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we're spawning right on top of UA, the orange Zerg, over on the right side of Heartbreak Ridge. And over on the left side of the map, we have our blue Terran. It is Zero. And, and this this map is interesting. Uh, the natural is, of course, um, it's a non-ramp choke, but it's very tight. Like, if you're not careful, Terran can do some really obnoxious stuff. Like, let's say you're going to 12th hatch, and you look. If you look at the overlord pathing, it doesn't see the natural choke. So if you just blindly go for 12th hatch, you make those drones, and no drone goes out to scout until the 12th hatch. Terran can actually just throw down a depot and just block you in, and. It's super, super effective. Of course, Zero's not going to be going for that. And another thing to be careful of, too, is the natural. Uh, and if you look at between the third, like the top right-hand corner or bottom left-hand corner of the map, there's these rocks and this little mineral patch right there. And that can be mined out, and you can do some pretty scary counterattacks into the natural, even if there's good defense at the mount. You can come in the back, so that's something that has to be worried about on this map as well. Yeah. So, you are going to be sending out his scout, and of course, he does not need to double scout this time, as this is a two-player map. Um, Heartbreak Ridge is actually one of my most favorite maps in Brood War, besides Medusa. Yeah, there was, there's been some fun games, and of course, this map also 
Uh, it's known as Heartbreak Ridge because there are ridges the map kind of uh, it's yeah. kind of a circular pattern to it. Yeah. And as you go along in the center, it's like almost like a wheel <laughs> with pods of high ground ridges, which make for a very like defensive play. You can kind of set up on those ridges and have a very effective defensive attacks like that. And it's a very easy map for Terran playing mech to just split half the map. Yeah. Uh, notoriously, one game that's known for is a movie versus Flash game in the OSL finals, where Flash literally just split the map, didn't attack, built a wall, supplied egos on one side, and just defended the other. And we had no idea how to deal with it. Just lost horribly. So, you're saying the name Heartbreak Ridge comes from the shape of the map, but where the name? But what about the other part of the name Heartbreak? Did the map maker like break up or something before he made <laughs> this? That I'm not sure. There's probably a story behind that, but I'm yeah. not sure. Like that, that, that like seems interesting to me. More interesting than the fact that UA is trying to attack into a bunker. Like, come on. How did good the decision, good decision by Ciro though to make that bunker. I think what he might have wanted to do is run by and Ciro just blocked that off. <clears throat> uh, really low drone count right now for Yui. And the fact that Ciro made that bunker makes me wonder if that wasn't... I wasn't paying close enough attention. That might have been faster than a 9 pool. You wouldn't usually need a bunker that quickly against anything else, but... And the drone count is very low too. Now droning up a little bit, up to 11, but... Yeah. That SCV from Ciro is going to need to get moving. I don't know if he's going to pay attention to it in time. No, he's not. He's going to die. <coughs> uh, uh, or it's going to live. I think he's playing in the front. He's sniping. Oh, it needs two hits. He's trying to get in front of it. And he does get it. He's got... Oh, what? Oh, mineral walking. Imba. And it will slide out of there. I think it should survive. It, yeah, it looks like it should. As... That's oh, and this time we, I think, are going to see plus one five racks here from zero. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. He's got the academy going down. No, EV, but he has to have the gas up pretty quick. So he's getting academy before second barracks. Yeah. Hmm. yeah it, he may try going for a bit of a fast, possibly mass marine push. See that third barracks coming down? Actually, this is a pretty quick three barracks uh, coming down. More often they're put down mid 30s. He's actually got three or two in the making at 25 supply. Of course, Yui has yet to transfer any drones to the main, although to his natural. Although he doesn't really need to because he's basically just on one drone per patch. It really wouldn't be that worth it to main or you just lose mining time. And he's not at the point where he's losing efficiency, so he's just going to rally some drones from his main to his natural. Yep. And now the natural is up for Yui here. A few Zerglings for, of Yui are at the natural of zero as well, just. Again, just trying to block this natural here. It doesn't seem like Zero wants to take it quite yet. He's going to be getting a few fire bats this game, which is going to help him a bit because it looks like UA wants to go for a very large, large ground force. As we saw that it worked last game, and I think Zero's just trying to do a bit of metagaming here where he's going to have the forces to defend against it. This is actually really interesting too because Yui is doing two hatch, uh, probably Mita, because we don't. Oh wait, no, it's gonna be two hatch lurker. Okay, so he's gonna be going for the fast lurker play. Although it's just a question of Sierra with these racks is being down that fast. Uh, what's the status? I need to see the status of this link speed. Okay, he's getting link speed, so there's gonna be this force of Sierra moving out. It's gonna be pretty quickly reinforced. It's not that big. I think he can just defeat it with links, but he's not gonna have time to make sunkins. So it's just going to be a matter of careful micro and dealing with that fire bat. If that fire bat uh, is controlled well and Yuri can't pick it off, it'll be worth his weight in gold. And yeah. it looks like Yuri's going to try to set up a bit of a counterattack. You're going to try to come in from the high ground as well as from the low ground. So that could be very effective, uh, especially if Zero doesn't get wind of it. But he needs to be careful not to get his links picked off. And I think there's enough to clean this up. And here we go, but he's not coordinating his attack that well yet. It's just a matter of being careful with that fire bat. And he's doing great damage right now. He's killed off everything. And there's no lurkers out. Sierra can probably win the game right here, right now, if he controls well. Getting a good surround, though, on those Marines. And it may not be enough. The fire bat is in danger of going down, but the healing from the medic is just too much. All yeah. the drones are killed. And really, Sierra is probably going to take this game. He says, oh, oh that's, that's a, a fire bat. <laughs> yeah, because the fire bat in SC2 is freaking gigantic, and now it's tiny. So it doesn't... And it kind of blended in with the creep because, oh, you, it's because the of the orange. Fire bat's too much. And Sierra roasts everything this game. Yep, so that is going to be GG from UA. So we're going to be heading to a game number five now. It's tied 2-2. Two to two.
What's our last map? Our last map is again Fighting Spirit. All right. Uh, yes, this is indeed the finals. We are watching the finals. Oh, and if you want to see another great game on Grand Line, there was a Flash Jadon game that was like 55 minutes, and it was a super, super good game. Just good play all around, very fun to watch. FS was like 09, I think. Because 09 is when I got into Brood War, and I think FS was out then. Yeah, Fighting Sparrow was out then. So whenever the players are ready, we can dive into this one. I have to say, this is so nice to be able to play this game without, like, insane lag. <laughs> like, I am pretty much a pure pre-war player, but I've been wanting to play a little bit of SC2 on the side just so I kind of know what's going on with the game and whatnot and can have more formed opinions about it. But before, you know, anything beyond, like, 100 supply, I'd get, like, sick, like, half an FPS. I'd fight like a 200-200 battle and I'd get like 7 frames and that was the end of the battle. Aw, oh, that sucks. Yeah, it was so bad. I'd just like be like, okay, so I might win, I might lose, and then there'd be a few frames later I'd be like, oh shit, I'm losing, and then like two frames later I'd be like, fuck, I'm dead. Yeah. That's... That's not fun. <laughs> yeah, it was beyond unplayable. It was just retarded. Unfortunately, I don't know if we'll be able to stream SC2 with this, as this processor is only a dual core, and apparently it's pretty important to have quad core yeah. if you want to actually yeah. be able to stream. Yeah. Wait, did Maverick make the tips himself? Nah. Actually, yeah, I don't know. Because there was a tank that said something that was like, I thought it said about StarCraft 2 stuff. No, because like on the bottom it, right now, it's for me, it's yeah. a size storm is amazing. Use it. Before oh. I saw one is like you must construct additional pylons. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, these might be custom made tips. Yeah. yeah, I thought I saw one that was like an SC2 tip, and I was like, wait, what's that doing on a free war mod? Maybe like for the people who use SC2 settings. No, the links show up by the way. Links don't get deleted in my chat. I don't really care. If I think they should go, then I just ban them, or like, I, Tinzu does it yep. for me. <laughs> That's how I take care of it. If they're like spamming random bullshit, then maybe they get banned, but other than that, I don't care. Yeah. And of course, this is Fighting Spirit, uh, the most iconic Ruwer map. It is by far the most played map. Very easy Dude. map to secure Dude. three bases. Dude, the most iconic Ruwer map has to be Destination. Yeah. In terms of playedness and whatnot, Fighting Spirit takes the cake. Python and Big Game Hunters, though, would also be up there in terms of iconic. Oh, yeah. Like, pretty much everyone knows both of those as well. Of course. All right, so we're going to be spawning on top of our Teal Terran. First time we're spawning on top of Zero, it is... I just said his name already. Zero. And over on the top right, once again, it's going to be horizontal positions for these two players. Our Orange Zerg, it is UA. And our all is asking about rank. Uh, Yui is a B minus or B zerg at one time, and Zero is an active uh, Terran who is around C ish. All right. So we've been in this position before, and it was this exact position. And Zero rolled him quite easily. Yes. But since that time, Yuri took two games, 
and then the last game just kind of miscalculating and not quite showing the control he needed to take down Sira's force. And without Sunkens or Lurkers to fall back on, he just died. So UA saying that he thought that Firebat was like a drugged up alcoholic marine. <laughs> and I guess like if you've played the SE2 <laughs> campaign or something, you'll... <laughs> Yeah, like there's a marine that just spawned with a weird portrait. Yeah, he's trying to show his individualness. Yeah, he's like, I will be different. He's like, I'm not gonna be conformist. <laughs> it was the, he just thought he just thought it was like you know the captain marine or whatever you know highest ranking. Yeah. Chief master sergeant marine. Yeah, and and like to me, I think that like that was even worse for UA because he was he's orange, so the zerglings when they were attacking the fire bat, like you could barely see the fire bat. Like, I could only see it because of the health bar. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah, and, and then he's just like, oh, my Zerglings are attacking one of my Zerglings. I better make them stop. I was just thinking, what wouldn't be good? It would be pretty hilarious if, uh, like, every once in a while, a Marine randomly spawned as, like, Chief Master Sergeant and had, like, a little extra health and did, like, one extra damage. <laughs> like, different colors. Oh, that would it'd be like, oh, imagine a rainbow colored Marine. <laughs> he's really different. He's special. Whoa, you be playing all drones trying to chase after Sierra. Okay, now th this still spreads workers pretty nice, so it's not as bad, but in Brood War when you do that, you actually would lose a pretty significant amount of time, mining time, so you'd never try to do that in Brood War. But on yeah. this mod, it doesn't hurt you as badly if you just grab all workers to chase. Yeah. And, you know, it's much more forgiving, this mod. Maverick is a nice guy, so he's very forgiving. And we do see Ciro here is dropping the CC first, which is totally fine. And Yui getting gas again very fast. I think we're going to see two hatch play again. Yeah. And I, I think this time around when Yui does go up to three bases, it's probably going to think of a better position for it as, again, like it's just so easy to hit the third base when it's at the center right position. The more natural, the geographically natural third, it's, it's just so easy to hit that way. Yeah, it's also it's also the natural third, if you will, in the sense that part of it's connected to your natural. So as long as that's secure, yeah. you really only have to defend one side, which you can wall off and do a bunch of other stuff too. So it's pretty easy to defend. Yeah. But walls, right. of course, yeah. don't work as well with Zerg. Yeah, you can kind of SimCity. It's actually a little bit trickier to SimCity though in this mod because everything's perfectly tight. And we can see Ciro has made that little uh, wall off there with the depot again for his marines, creating that tight space. Totally safe against those four lings right now. Yeah. And this time Huey taking no chances, uh, already has a creep colony going down that he can morph in case. We can see his hydralisk going down, so it is definitely two hatch lurker. Uh, which is going to be really important here. Ciro is going to need to scout this, and he needs to build two bunkers. If he doesn't get those down, it is really tough to defend. It's just you don't have enough marines and your detection isn't fast enough so you need to have those bunkers down and you need to have a turret down or you are in very big trouble yeah metabolic boost is on the way right now for UA and for our Terran player Zero we do have the ghost academy finishing up and the first engineering may also coming out the ghost academy or the academy right <laughs> just the academy it, that does, port, it does definitely look like it that unit portrait on the production tab is so confusing at to me especially as an se2 caster i'm just like that's a ghost academy <laughs> you just kind of say you're like ghost wait 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 this isn't this is an se2 <laughs> yeah like i mean like i only have the se2 console i have the se2 scoreboard and stuff like and it looks like an se2 building <laughs> gonna call it a ghost academy. Alright, so Sierra's commsat stations are being finished up. Scans need to go down here. He needs to see the hydro dead. He needs to realize what is going down and get ready to deal with this. Yeah. There we go. Okay, he scans it. Sees the hydro den. Should be wondering, especially when he scans the main, sees no sign of a spire. No sign of a third hatch. Yeah. And we'll have to see how he begins reacting to this. He's getting his marines and medics out. A factory is going down immediately as well to get those vessels out faster and tanks as well. And stimming, and it looks like he is going to get ready to go for an attack, but I think this time, uh, yeah, there will, will be lurkers uh, done in time. He's just going to have to pull back, maybe hold for half a sec, and he will be out on the map this time. He's actually trying to stim run across the map, way abandoning... Okay, there we go, never mind. <laughs> yeah, that would have been very bad for Zero if he just went without his medics as 
well, since all of his marines already lost some health, that would have been so horrible for him if they lost. And I don't think you've come into this, but yeah, we can see he's just going to form the bridge, and he's just going to do his job. He's going to slow uh, Yui coming down across the map. Yeah. And he does have a bunker up already at the front, and is already getting down his... Oh, he's actually going to go two factories, so he's going to get out a bunch of tanks to deal with these lurkers, and rely on scans and maybe a turret to deal with the lurkers. And here we go. He is moving out across the bridges. Hesen Marine's already pretty well spread, and Yui running in, losing a few links for nothing. Uh, needs to pull back, though, as the Lurkers have broad. And a few Marines, ah, oh, did not really want to lose those four that quick. And another one moving forward. And now it is just a matter of, you see, this is what you want to do against this. This is the proper way to play against this. Although he has actually decided he cannot afford to be out here and is racing back home. And Yui is trying to get his surround maybe on the medics. No, he's actually just trying to tickle the Marines. You can see the turret is going up right now. He is getting ready to defend at the bunker, and the medics do make it back safely, so that is nice for him. Yeah. And Yui looks like gathering up his forces, maybe getting ready for an attack here. Alright, so Yui just looking like he wants to set up his position is starting to burrow down those lurkers there outside the bridge. And the factories are coming up right now. The tanks are starting to get produced. Right. And is he getting siege? Yes, he is getting his siege. Wait, is he? Nope. No, uh... he's. Wait, the machine shop turns even if there's not a research. Okay, that's a little confusing, but good to know. Uh, and behind this, Yui is going to take his third base, and he'll probably want to drone up behind this, as he's not going to be able to do damage at this point, and his economy is going to be much weaker. Uh, I'd expect him to be mining significantly less money uh, at the moment. So pretty much Zero is going to be stuck here now until his and probably his science missile comes out. Now we might see him siege up, once he has siege, we might see him siege up a few tanks and force the lurkers to try to pull back a little bit. But I don't think we'll see any big attack until science vessels. Yeah, because UA he has the time to get a lot of lurkers out, and you can't purely rely on scans, especially because I believe the scan um, radius is a lot smaller in this than what it normally is in SC2. Yeah, it's not particularly big. I would say it's just a, if you look at the size of the bridge, uh, a fighting spirit, it's just a little bit bigger than that. Yeah. So it's much, much smaller than the SC2 scan radius. So you can't purely rely on them. So, it, like, I know you can save up a lot of energy, blah, 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 you don't need mules. It's just the one spell on the combat station anyways, but it's still not a good idea. No matter. Oh, and Zero has a dropship out. I kind of like this. Uh, there'll probably be a lot of forces uh, committed at the front to this contain and sneak around with the drop. Might be able to do a little damage. Mm -hmm. Trying to see what's at home right now. There's not a lot. Uh, there are three hydros, so it'll probably be more to lurkers here pretty soon. We can see Yui has a ton of gas. And Ciro has a ton of tanks. Uh, the vessel's about to come out, so we're about to see Ciro come out with a pretty scary army. Especially given how lurker-based, I mean, tanks are absolutely dominate lurkers as they outrange them. So that's a pretty nice little perk. Oh, the machine shop turns like ten times faster if there's something upgrading. Oh, oh, cool, yeah, you're right. That's, that's... sick animation, ha! Huh. Yeah. It, it looks like a factory from Age of Empires 3, though. I don't know why. To me, <laughs> it kind of does. It kind of does. It, it's just like a lot smaller and in a completely different game. Holy, what the hell? That dropship was moving super fast for some reason. I don't know what just happened, but... And here yeah. comes a giant push. Now we'll see how if Ciro's multitasking is up to snuff. The Scourge are patrolling, but I don't know if they're patrolling far enough to see that dropship. Oh, the Overlord is going to spot it, though. And if Yui's paying attention, he can actually go Scourge it, and he... Oh, no, he's not probably a little bit oh he does see it now and there we go the drop ship gets stirred. so he doesn't have to worry about the multiple front attack but he does have this big army coming in here and this is a very lurker heavy army which is not that good against the big tank army from Ciro yeah. and it's actually got a lot of hydras in there which also aren't all that good but Ciro needs to be careful if he goes in and gets flanked that can end very poorly oh he's teaching up and the lurkers are all coming behind he's going to try to burrow in there as much as possible the scan is going off the vessels a lot of place the marines are not that well spread he needs to spread them more but a lot of lurkers out of range not able to hit the tanks and they might all get cleaned up, but at the same time, there are no medics left from Ciro, and his force here is dying really easily. He doesn't, he's also, Vessel's way out of position. This is really sloppy control here from Ciro, who doesn't seem to realize that his Vessel is still alive, and would just, oh, he's actually just gonna straight up counterattack here, uh, oh, realizing, oh, there's Marines there, and there we go, here comes another Vessel now, and a lot of these lurkers are very, very, very low on health. Yeah, and it, it UA's counterattack did not work as Ciro 
realistically just got lucky that his reinforcements were arriving at just that time, but it looks like Yue going to try going for another flank now as he is collecting more Hydralisks and Lurkers over from his third base. So now it looks like that putting his third at his natural third actually might work out for him as he has the time now to get those Lurkers up compared to the last time he tried this where... But he doesn't have anything coming from the other side though, there's just not that much stuff and he is trying to coordinate a large flank of you, uh, one sea tank here randomly out in the open and now coming back, can he get a good spread on those Marines? A science vessel is there. Uh, honestly, Lurkers just are not seeming as effective against Marines in this mod. Like, Zero doesn't seem all that spread and is easily taking care of these Lurkers. And this game is over, folks. There is nothing left yeah. for Yuri. And it looks like Zero is going to take this game and he is going to take the first ever SC2 Brood War tournament. Yep, and there it is, the well played and GG's. Now the question is, will Sirio be able to repeat this in the coming weeks with money, potentially drawing out some stronger players as well? We'll just have to wait and see. Alright, so very well played by everybody that decided to enter the tournament and actually showed up today. Um, so, thanks again, Lucid Dream, for hosting this. It was, it was very fun. fun. Thank you for casting. I was glad you were able to get out there and do that. That was fun. If you want to cast more of them, uh, feel free to just let me know. I'll be happy to have you. Yeah, man. It's it, it's a lot interesting as I basically have to rely completely on play by play. By play. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, you know, I haven't played Brood War in, like, four years, so... Yeah. Uh, in yeah. SC2, uh, what's your skill level? Are you more of an analytic role when you cast SC2? No, I can do both. Okay. I'm, so I'm flat. I'm okay. flat, but I can still do both. Like I, I just like my entire life is like StarCraft Two. That's what I do. At school, okay, yeah, I'm yeah. like thinking about building <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, I know how that goes. Yeah. All right, so we're going to be closing off the stream. If you liked my casting, feel free to hit that follow button. Um. And. Uh, I'm actually very surprised about how many viewers we got. Like, I think it was like over 100 for about 90% yeah, of the entire over, time. I think we peaked at a little over 150 or something like that, which yeah. is nice. Yeah. And again, the game director for today was Kuran. You can follow him on Twitter of twitter.com slash Kuran TV. And of course, if you, you can go to his Twitch, which is Kuran underscore TV and just watch him observing as he do. Alright, so thanks for watching everyone, and have a good night.